Hey guys, it's Saleh. Today I'm going to code the turtle strategy using ChatGPT01 preview model to guide me for my entry and exit rules. It's gonna be a fun experiment. Not only that, it actually taught me about this one new indicator that I didn't know before and it improved the results of this strategy and my previous ones. All right, let's get to it. So I simply asked ChatGPT how does the turtle strategy work, explain to me the entry and exit rules and how to set my stop loss and take profit. So in case you don't know, the turtle trading system is a classic trend following system developed in the 1980s by legendary traders Richard Dennis and William Eckhart. It was part of an experiment to determine whether great traders are born or made. The strategy focuses on entering trades when a strong trend is identified and employs specific rules for entry, exit, position sizing, and risk management. Okay, what's my entry rule? Buy signal. Enter a long position when the price exceeds the highest high of the past 20 days. Okay, and for sell signal, enter a short position when the price falls below the lowest low of the past 20 days. So basically, this is the definition of the Donchian channel indicator. In case you didn't know, that's exactly what it does. What else? It's also saying no re-entry rule. If the previous breakout would have resulted in a profitable trade, skip the next breakout signal to avoid potential false signals. And as for position sizing, it's saying to use the ATR, which is what I always do. For position sizing, risk 1 or 2%. I usually risk 3%. That's fine. For exit rule is saying when the price falls below the lowest low of the past 10 days. System 2 exit when the price falls below the lowest low of the past 20 days. As for take profit, it's saying use a trailing stop, adjust the stop loss order as the order becomes profitable, maintaining the two end distance from the highest price achieved for long positions or the lowest price for short positions. The position is closed when the exit breakout levels are breached. Okay, so let's go to Jesse and create a new strategy and call it Turtle. And because we're using AI for our rules, I'm gonna also include the name AI in it. Now let's go to my PyCharm editor and open that. So first, let me show you how the Dungeon channel look like on TradingView. So let's look it up. And by default, the period is set to 20, which is what ChatGPT was also telling us. All right, so you see when a new high is achieved, the upper band goes up. So basically the lower band is the low of the past 20 candles and the upper band is the high of the past 20 candles. So let's define a new property and call it Don Chien, and I'm gonna say return TA Don Chien, and I'm gonna pass the current candles. The period is by default 20, so we don't really have to set it, but let's just do it anyways. And, but there's one thing I wanna change. So for example, here we had a breakout, right? But if you see the upper band is also going up and that's because, again, it's just simply the highest of the past 20 candles, right? So if the new candles is, is making a new high, the value for Don Chin will also go up and that's not really great. It's gonna make it a bit difficult for us. So instead of using this value, I wanna use the value of the previous candle. Now we can do this in two ways in Jesse. The first one is that we pass the sequential parameter and set it to true so that this way, instead of giving us one single value, it's gonna give us an array of values. And then we're gonna use not just the last value, but the one before that. But we could also do it in another way, which is to simply pass not just all the candles, but we could simply not pass the last candle. So I'm gonna say this, and here it is. So we're saying, give me all the candles up until the last one. So it's not gonna include the last one. And by the way, if I wanted to select all the candles of this NumPy array, I would have done it like this, or simply just not pass it at all, but now I'm gonna do it like this. All right, so there's that. And for our entry rule, as ChatGPT told us, we're going to say if the current price is more than the upper band of the current Dungeon channel. That's it. And for our position sizing, we're going to use the current price as our entry. So it's going to be like this. And as for the stop, we're going to use the current price minus the ATR multiplied by 2.5, which works best for me. And for our quantity of the position is going to be utils.risk to quantity. Our capital is going to be self-available margin. The risk number is going to be three. As for entry price, let's say entry and then the stop. And the fee rate is going to be the current fee of the exchange that I'm trading. Now let's submit the buy order, which would be self.buy equals quantity and then the entry price. Now for our 
short positions, we're going to do the opposite. All right. Now, the should cancel order, it doesn't really matter what we enter here because we're using a market order to enter our positions. If we were using a limit order or a sub order, the value for this would have mattered, but now it doesn't. For the sub loss, I want to do it as soon as the position is open. So I'm going to say on open position, if it's a long position, my stop loss order is going to be the quantity of the current position and the price of it, just like what we did here, is going to be the current price minus 2.5 times of the current ATR value. Now we're going to do the opposite for a short position. And when I say opposite, I mean, instead of subtracting the ATR, we are adding it. All right. So this is good. Now, what about our take profit? I'm going to do what ChatGPT suggested here, which is to use the trailing stuff. And I actually did try other methods, but they didn't really work well. And I'm not going to waste your time with it. So I will just write this one. So I want it to be a trailing stuff. What does it mean? We are already submitting the sub loss order when the position opens. So now, whenever a new candle closes, we want to update our sub loss, right? So we will use the update position method, which will get executed whenever a new candle is closed. So I'm going to say, if it's a long position, again, update my sub loss with the current quantity and the price, instead of simply giving it the new price, well, if I do it, Okay, let me show you. So if I do this, like this, and simply update my sub loss whenever a new candle closes, well, the problem is that what if the price is not going above? What if we're not in profit? We're actually sitting in a loss. If we update our sub loss in that case, well, the sub loss just keeps going down and it never gets hit. And that's actually horrible. So we want to update our sub loss whenever the new price of the sub loss is actually better than the previous price. So for a long position, that would be the maximum price of the current average sub loss price, which in our case would be this, or the new sub loss price, which would be this. And for a short position, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to say the minimum of the current average sub loss or this new sub loss price. Okay. So again, this is only going to submit it if the price is going in our favor, if we are sitting in profit and we, for example, for a long position, we want to move up the sub loss price. Okay. And vice versa for a short position. So this looks complete and we can start running it and seeing the results. Okay. So let's go to Jesse to the back testing, change the strategy to turtle AI and the time frame is set to one hour. The Symbol is BTC UCT. The starting point is 2022 up until 2024. All right, so the fast mode and benchmark is also enabled. So let's run it. Okay, so these are the results. Now, for the first run, it's actually not bad, especially during the bear market, it was performing really well. The max return is minus 42%, which isn't great. Okay, the win rate is 30%. So at this point, I went back to ChatGPT and I simply said, I coded this strategy and it doesn't always work great. What other indicators can I use to improve it? Because as you know, guys, using simply one indicator never yields the best results. We always want to combine at least a couple of them to filter out bad trades so that the volatility would come down, the max order would come down. So I asked this and it gave me these suggestions to use this, a simple moving average, to use the RSI, which I did and it performed horribly, to use the MACD, which again didn't work for me, use the ADX, which always worked fine for me, at least for trend following strategies, use the Bollinger Bands, which didn't help me, use the OBV, support and resistance levels, which aren't really that useful in an algo trading strategy. And that's almost it. Now, so as I start coding these, the moving average actually worked well. Now, I want to use the moving average on a bigger time frame. So, first, let's define a new property and call it long term candles. And in it, I'm going to return self get candles and pass the current exchange, the current symbol, and the four hours time frame. Now, let's define another one and call it long term 
moving average and I'm gonna return TASMA of the long-term candles so instead of passing the current candles I passed long-term candles right and as the period I'm gonna use 200 all right so now I'm gonna come down and say I want to open long positions when the current price is above the long-term moving average and for shoot short I will do the opposite so let's go back and run it again all right so now we're definitely beating the market we ended up with 37 percent profit the max return is down to 26 the win rate is 33 percent okay now by the way in this strategy because it's a trend following and we are trying to ride the trend for as long as possible it's perfectly normal for our win rate to be lower than 50 percent that's perfectly normal for as long as our average win to loss is more than one and it is in here it's 2.21 which is amazing all right so there's that another suggestion by chat gpt was the adx indicator which is what i always use anyways so let's also add that let's define a new property and return whether or not the current adx number is bigger than 30 and for my entry rule now i'm gonna simply say and self.adx and for short i will also do the same let's go back and run it again so while this is going i wanted to quickly remind you guys that we have a discord community with more than 3000 quants such as you and i we hang out there share ideas and help each other out and i would love to see you guys there All right so now the equity curve is much more smooth than what it was before and i really like that and yes the piano also got a bit better the max return came down a bit and the win rate actually went up to 38 percent so let's go back to the strategy because i want to see the dungeon channel values for it so let's define another method called after and say self add line to candle chart and i want the dungeon so the title is going to be the upper band and the value self dungeon upper band and one more for the lower band so let's go back rerun this if i go back now i can see the upper and lower bands of the dungeon channels and one issue that i had with it which after plotting it on the chart i could see is that sometimes like in here there's a breakout it opens a position it closes it but when it does close it because the price is actually below the lower band it immediately opens another trade and I don't want to open a trade here now in this case it's not really that bad but in some cases it was horrible so I wanted to code this so that once you close a trade do not take another trade right right in the same candle all right just wait at least one more so for that we have to define a new variable just to hold the last index that we closed our trade so I'm gonna call it last closed index and i'm gonna set it to zero and we need to update this whenever a trade is closed right so for that i'm gonna say on closed position i need you to update the last closed index and set it to the current index right and for my entry rules let's define a new property and call it past time and in it i'm gonna say whether or not the current index minus the last close index is more than zero that's it so if it's even one that's okay but if it's zero it means it's in this current candle and just don't take any trades so let's go back and rerun this all right so i forgot to add it to the shoot long and shoot short All right, so let's go back and run it again. All right, so you see the PL actually went up and the max order came down just with this one single change. And everything else is actually pretty much the same, such as the win rate. So that's why the results improved. All right, so at this point, this is the result that I had, but I wasn't super happy with it and I wanted to improve it again. So here's what I did. I went back and asked the same questions but this time not from ChatGPT or one preview 
but from ChatGPT for all model. And it gave me pretty much the same result, except it suggested this, which changed everything for me. It said the choppiness index purpose. This is a lesser known but powerful indicator to measure market consolidation, choppy versus trending conditions. And that's exactly what we always want in a trend following strategy, right? And that's why we use ADX always. So it's saying if the choppiness index is high, avoid taking breakout trades because the market is likely to be ranging. Only take trades when the choppiness index is low, indicating that the market is in a trending phase. So let's go back and quote it. So I'm going to say the, let's call it chop, and say whether or not the chop for the current candles are below 40. And come down here and add this as another entry rule. Go back to Jesse and rerun this and look at that. Our PNL went up. The equity curve looks much better. The max drawdown came down to minus 13%. So this means we can add to our position to get the same max drawdown as before, but this time we would get even better PNL. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So the win rate actually went up to 40%. The average win to loss is 2.49, which is absolutely amazing. And the sharp is 1.05. All right. So why do I say the max drawdown here is really important? Now, what did we have before? Actually, let's bring this back and go to here and just return true so that this won't be used anymore and run it again to see what numbers we had. Now here, the max drawdown was minus 20% and the PNL was 40. Here, the max drawdown is min minus 13%. So that means I can just go to my code and if I return the chop, but this time add to my position, let's say multiply it by a number such as 1.8 to use leverage in other words and go back and run it again this time when we get approximately the same max throttle number the PNL instead of 40% is now at 106% which is pretty amazing all right so I really like these numbers and I'm going to submit this strategy for free on our strategy index page. So if you want to use source code, you can just copy it from there. But I also kept working on it and tweaked the parameters a bit, did some optimization, and I was able to improve the results up to this. So instead of 100% for a max return of minus 22%, I got it up to 219% with a max return of minus 18%. So it was a huge jump in the results. And I'm going to also submit this one as a premium strategy again to our strategy indexing page. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I know I did, especially the choppiness index indicator, which I didn't know about before. And if you guys want me to create more videos like this one, please let me know. And by the way, I've been working on some other types of strategies, such as grid trading and also trading using Fibonacci lines. And the results of them weren't really great. So that's why I haven't created a video about them yet. But if you guys want me to make videos about experiments that are really fun and something that you might be curious about too but the results just aren't that profitable let me know down in the comments and as always we're gonna have a giveaway a random person who likes this video posts a comment and subscribes to the channel is going to receive 1 million bonk token let's pick the winner for my previous video and the winner is this was great thank you so much for your comment please reach out to me so that i can send you your bonk tokens thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one Oh,